people look at stories through different lenses. I have my own take on some of these trending issues. Hi, I'm Mariah Ramharak and welcome to In Case You Missed It. Hello, I'm Mariah Ramharak and thank you so much for tuning in to In Case You Missed It on Sportsmax and Scene TV. On today's show, it is my pleasure to welcome a man who is a former footballer. He managed the Iceland national team where he led them to the playoff stage of the 2014 FIFA World Cup qualification. He has also been head coach of the Jamaica Reggae Boys. Let's welcome in studio Haima Hall Grimson. Coach, welcome and firstly, thank you so much for taking the opportunity, you know, taking the time out of your busy schedule to join me here on set. Yeah. Thanks for inviting me. I'm, I'm, I'm honoured to be here. All right. And how are you, Coach? Because I know it's the start of a brand new year. Are you overwhelmed yet with the amount of work that you have? No, no, but this, this year is, is really big for Jamaica. Um, and a lot is riding on it, both in developing the team, but also financially, this can be a really good year for the JFF. If we do good, uh, these two tournaments in March, the, the, the Nations League semi-final and hopefully a final, mm. and then uh, Copa America, big tournaments. Uh, so yeah, if, if we do well, it's gonna be a really good year for Jamaica. So hopefully we will do. Right, I'm hoping for the best for the Jamaica Reggae Boys as well. Let's reflect a little though, because 2023 was a really good season for you and the Reggae Boys. And as we look back on what was, for me, the high point would be when the Reggae Boys ended the year with that comeback win, defeating Host Canada 3-2 in the second leg of League A quarterfinal in Nations League action. Was it the same for you? Was that the high point? Yeah, for sure, because uh, not only it was a good win and it was good for confidence, it's good for the growth of the team. Now they, they believe that, you know, no hurdle is too big for us. But secondly, it meant a lot so for, for us as a team to, to qualify for these tournaments. This game was, was like a, a, a big opportunity and we, we seized it. So for so many reasons, a big, the, 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 the highlight of last year. Would you say that, you know, that victory, you said it meant a lot to you, right? But for the program, the Jamaica Reggae Boys program on the whole, because I know when you, of course, were going through the bad patch when you now started, and of course, the first thing the fans want to do is fire the coach. When things are not going their way, nobody thinks about the players. It's the coach that must go. Would you say that also helped you, you know, in becoming welcomed? by the Jamaican public? I really don't see it that way. You know, I've been, I was a national team coach for Iceland for seven years. And it's similar everywhere you go. In Jamaica, you have three million national team coaches. <laughs> and they all wanna, <laughs> wanna express their opinion. And that is your, that's the right, this is the national team. So you, you, you should have a right to express your opinion on the national team. And it will never be that way that I can agree to everyone. It's just too many versions of how you want to do things. So this is just something I need to live with. It was, I, I, I say, say to the media, especially back home, you know, it's, it's, but, but Jamaicans are maybe more special in Iceland because they, they really are outspoken. So they are not hiding their feelings. No. They just say what they mean. So the first leg we lost at home against Canada and the second leg we, we won. Yes. So after the first game I experienced to be the idiot of, uh, of the country and then it was kind of the opposite when we won in Canada. So no, that's just the life of a national team coach and probably all coaches. This is just our, our situation and we know our job is most often dependent on if we win games or lose games. It doesn't yeah. matter how good we are working or what we are doing. It's, it's all about winning, winning matches. Yeah, most important. Apart from that, are there any other major high points in 2023 that you feel is worth mentioning, especially since you were the man leading the team? No, it was, the, the Gold Cup was a good experience. So I, I, I often say that, that going to major finals is the only chance a national team coach 
has to actually interact with the players because the FIFA windows for us uh, is, is only nine days and even eight days because of travel distance. So I, we only have these guys for eight days and within these eight days we have two matches. So you, you cannot do much in a FIFA window. But when you have a tournament, you have a month with the players. So that's the time really that a, a group can develop into a, into a good unit and unified group. And you, f you feel immediately if a player belongs or don't belong yeah. in a tournament. So for development and that the big picture is qualifying for the World Cup in 226. For that big picture, qualifying for the Gold Cup. Last, uh, this year, uh, last year, sorry, and qualifying for the Copa America this year yeah. helps to build a team that can be strong enough to qualify for the World Cup and even do good things in the World Cup in 226. Yeah, for sure. You know, many times people, of course, get angry when the team does bad. They celebrate the successes. But it's the people that are behind the scenes that really understand the work that goes on. Talk to me about the work, the ups, the downs that went into getting the reggae boys to this point. And for you, coming from a different country, it must be more difficult. Yeah, so, so I kind of did the similar thing when I started with Iceland. Uh, a lot of things that we needed to improve. I was lucky, or we were lucky, that we had an experienced coach from Sweden coming to guide us and ki kind of giving us the, the blueprint how because Sweden has done really good prior to, to him coming. He was the coach for Sweden, I think, for 20 plus years. Yeah. So he qualified for, I think, six major finals with Sweden, a pretty small country. So he gave us like the formula on what Sweden did and we adapted it to Iceland. So I'm, I'm trying to, to bring it here, what we can use of, from that formula to, to do the same things with Jamaica. Uh, but it's a lot of, lot of things we need to improve not only the infrastructure here in, in Jamaica, but all the setup and things. And if we really do what we say or say what we do, if we want to become one of the, the, the best national teams in the world, we need to do similar things, at least get close to what the, yeah. the best things, best, best teams are doing. So, but we need to upgrade in so many areas here, but Hopefully, slowly, we will, we will get there. Yeah, in time. But, but it's difficult. Everything uh, is about budget and stuff. So, so, but we try to do the best of uh, what we have. So, yeah. yeah, so that was the most shocking thing when I came, was kind of how, how much improvement is needed here yeah. to be the same level as what I'm used to, for example, in Iceland. Understand. What would you say has been the toughest moment for you as coach in 2023? Well, well, adapting and learning new culture always takes time. Yeah. You know, for example, when I came, there was there was kind of so little data available for a new coach coming in. I didn't know many of the players, so needed to spend a lot of time analyzing what options I have to select for the national team. And I'm still doing it. I, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen half of the players available. Uh, and then there is players all over the world. Yeah. Plus there's players here. So you always will oversee someone or just take a look at one game and forget a player. Or, or you don't see him this game, but he will play good the next game. And everybody's asking, why is he not picked? So this is just the, the challenge and we are trying to to work on a, on a on a database that, for example, when when I leave, whenever that will be, we leave something behind. So when the next coach comes in, it will be easier. It will be easier for him to come in, and at least there will be some data available for him yeah. to, to 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 make it easier. So he doesn't need to spend a lot of time doing yeah, and and then it's doing the, the mistakes in the beginning. So if we leave something behind, the next guy doesn't need to do the same mistakes that we have been doing. Yeah, that's so, so that's all, because the JFF is investing in the coach. So this investment much, must be something that they can, somebody can build on in the future. Yeah. Maybe the next coach will not use everything we are doing, but at least he knows what we have been doing. Yeah, he doesn't start from zero. Well, 2024 is a very big year for the Reggae Boys. How are preparations coming along with the team and what has January looked like so far? So, I, I try to focus my time on one thing at a time. 
So uh, January was always uh, um, kind of decided that we, we focus on domestic players, domestic league, uh, and half of February the same. So the plan is to, to go to, to Trinidad in the beginning of February and play a friendly. They came last year in, in, in January to Jamaica and played two matches here. So we, we hopefully can go in beginning of February and play two matches there. Uh, the under-20 team is now going to Trinidad and playing play two matches there as well. So uh, that, that is January, focused on domestic players. We will, we will move around the parishes to meet the, the people in charge, talking to them, interact a little bit, explaining what we are doing uh, and trying to help what, whatever we can do to assist the, the, the parishes in their job of developing talents in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully in the end of that period, we, we played two matches uh, and then we focus on the, the Nation League semi-final against the US, which is in, in, is March. in March. Yeah, that's a really, really big assignment um, that Congo Cup Nations League semis and finals in the US are there. Well, you said there's a practice match in Trinidad. So will you be using those matches to gauge what you're going to be doing in March? Some of the things, yeah, but we will be focusing on domestic players, so helping them to, to develop, expose them to international football, seeing if they are good working in, in our environment uh, and in our tactics, etc. So a chance for them to, to show us what they can do. Um, but this is not a FIFA window, so we, we cannot call anyone that is playing professionally, so that the clubs will not release them for these matches. Yeah. So the majority of the the team that played in the Gold Cup and against Canada are players coming from abroad, professional players, uh, and then mixed with some, some domestic players. And we are trying to now expand our pool and our, our kind of knowledge on the domestic players. Yeah, what do you think it will take to get this current crop of players across the line? You've been working with them for some time. Well, I must say that the talent Jamaica has is is ridiculously good, yeah. ridiculously good. So individual talent um, is amazing, but the, the 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 tricky part is to make a team out of individual talent uh, because you always need balance in in football, and especially in modern football where, where where it's so tactical, it's so difficult to break defenses down, uh, and there's so much analysis on everyone and everything. So. No, it's, it, that's the tricky part, to make a good team. And I think we, we are progressing really well in that area. Uh, we are playing longer spells really well. We have been a little bit up and down, both between matches, but inside matches as well. So we have good spells and bad spells. I think we, we are always kind of increasing the steadiness in how we play. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we, we can do it. I really believe that we can do it. Yeah, and we did at the top of the show say that 2024 is packed, right coach? So if Nations League action was not enough work, this summer there's Copa America in the United States as well. Are you pleased with the venues that have been selected? Because you're a man, you talk about the venues. You want to make sure you have good playing conditions. So are you pleased? Yeah, yeah, the, the pitches in the US, at, at least the at least the, the venues where the games are played are really good. Yeah. Uh, some of them are uh, American football stadiums, not kind of built for, for, for soccer, like they say. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's good venues there. But no, I've, I've been more complaining about the, the condition of the pitches in Jamaica yeah. because development of football uh, is different if the pitches are bad. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will slowly improve because it will skyrocket the development of football in Jamaica if the pitches are better. Right, and in Copa America, you're drawn in Group B alongside Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela. Which would you say is your toughest opponent? Well, well Mexico is the highest ranked team in, in the group. Uh, we know them from the past. I think we are getting closer to them. Uh, and by playing them more often, we, we, we get to know them where the danger is, etc. So we are, we're pretty we're pretty knowledgeable about uh, Mexico, but they are a, they are a tough opponent. But all these teams are physical. They are they are they are quick, uh, aggressive teams. Or yeah. So yeah, that's something to be wary about. I think this this group is the most open group, so all teams can qualify. 
It's not like a, it's no sh like runaway winner. Right. I would guess, and there's no no team that you would say this this team is going to be last in the group. So even though we are ranked the lowest, I think we have uh, uh, an equal sh chance like all the others to qualify from the group. Yeah. And, you know, there are so many big competitions this year. They, talk to me about the importance of the players being able to shift from one project to the other, because if they can't coach, that's a problem. Yeah, especially, uh, and I've learned some, some good lesson from, from my assistant coach, Meron Gordon, who says that coming here and playing CONCACAF games against maybe teams that on paper don't, don't look good uh, is, is a totally different ball game uh, and players need to be ready for that uh, that fight that will be going on the, the intensity in the game etc so it's a lot of things that uh, is different when playing uh, CONCACAF games around here and before the before the Gold Cup we have the first two games in our World Cup preliminaries yeah so that's the FIFA window in June after the FIFA window, the, the Copa America starts. So, you know, we go from one project to another, uh, different venues, you know, good stadiums probably, and then to, to worse conditions, etc. So we just need to have players mentally ready for, for playing all these matches in different mm -hmm. venues. How do you plan to help them adjust, most importantly, to manage their workload and ensure that they don't pick up any injuries? Difficult. Yeah, that, that's difficult because because uh, we want all players to, to give everything in every game. So, and that, that includes you, you can get injured for sure. But if you always think about you know not getting injured, you probably will. Yeah. So just keep your mind strong. Yeah. How important is it that the Jamaican fans in the U.S. come out to show support for the reggae boys? Because I believe that the loudest in the stadium always wins. I try to be loud when I come to watch the Jamaica reggae boys, but my voice is so fine, coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope so. Uh, Jamaicans are loud. In yeah. general, they are loud. <laughs> so I hope they show up in numbers and, and support the, the team. Uh, and I, I've, I felt like there's a growing positivity mm -hmm. around the, the, the national team. I, I recognize that in the past it has been kind of a negative aura around uh, and it will take time to change that. Yeah. Um, winning will always help, but I think uh, with just giving a little bit from your, yourselves, uh, showing respect to, to everyone around us will, will also give us uh, more support. Um, yeah, and I, and I hope people are seeing that there is progress. I feel like this way, I'm the coach, but... No, I, I, I'm sure I, they're I, seeing, I'm seeing it. Yeah, so, so no, but like you say, um, one thing follows the other, success and support. So I hope the support will come and then we will have more chance to, to have success on the pitch. Yeah. Coach, many would not know this. Well, let's just say I had no clue that you're a dentist by profession. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, football in Iceland is not a professional sport. Oh. So it's kind of a semi-professional today. But when, when I was playing uh, and even after I, I, I played, there it was no money involved in football. So most people there do it because of passion. So the coaches don't get a lot of money. So normally they are teachers, they are something else. And okay. they, they do coaching after work. Maybe a little bit like some, some coaches are doing it here. Okay. So, no, I, I, I went to university in Reykjavik. Uh, really didn't know what I was going to study. So my friend was going to a dental school and I said, I'll join you. Wow. Um, and uh, we stayed together for, for six years. So the the university education for dentistry is six years in Iceland. So I did that. And after, after that, I opened my clinic back home in my, my village. And still have it today. So uh, yeah, I, I've, I've worked as a dentist for 30 years now. So, so when so, you go back, do you practice? I do a little, yes. Okay, but it's running because you have workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fancy. So what made you decide that, okay, I'm going to focus more on football? Is it the love for football? Yeah, that was passion. Um, so I, I come from poor background, so my mother was you know, sweeping floors in, in a factory so she could pay my rent in the capital for, for, for doing dental school. Um, and she always said when I, 
was coaching football. Why are you doing that? Why, why, why don't you stay being a dentist? Yeah. But it was always the passion because even though it didn't pay much to be a coach, for me, uh, it was always such a passion that I did that. I coached, I coached uh, under 10s for about 15 years. And mom was probably like, what is he doing? Yeah, why is he spending time on that? <laughs> I've, I've, I've uh, pushed myself for him to go through school. And this is what and he chooses. He's, he's, he's spending time coaching kids. And then I was coaching the, the women's team back home, the senior women's team for about five years. And, and was coaching even my wife. So at, at training, uh, I was like, la, la, la. When she came home, she was like, la, la, la. Oh, my. <laughs> so it was, no, it was, it was nice. And after that, I took over the men's team. And from there, it led to the national team. And then after the national team, I went to Qatar for three years. And then I came here. So no, it was, it's just passion. It's I just passion. Tell. Yeah, you know, even without finding out these things about you, because now I know because of the conversation that we're having, but, you know, your passion is evident. The way you speak in press conferences, the way how angry you get when things don't go the way that you want. You can tell because that anger comes from a place of love, of course. You know, you've been here, you've joined the Jamaica Reggae Boys since 2022. Are you pleased though, coach? Because that passion, of course, as I said, comes from a place of care. Are you pleased with what you've been able to achieve with this team so far, with the little time? No, I can't say. I, I wish we, we were in a in a, a little bit better place in in everything. Uh, but I know as well that you know the what what I have to work with and what the JF has to work with. I need to be respectful that you know things will take time to develop and change. I think in the past uh, the the growth, especially in 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 the infrastructure has been slow yeah. and the pandemic hit really bad here in Jamaica. So we just need to be respectful of the situation and work with what we have. But of course, like every coach everywhere, you, you, you like to be further ahead than you are. But I think slow is sometimes better than, you know, jumping from one place to another. So hopefully slowly but steadily we will we'll, we'll grow. Is your relationship with the GFF a good one? Are they supportive? Yeah, I, I would say so. I would say so. Uh, and uh, yeah, but, but like I said, we, we, can, we can grow a lot. We can grow a lot from where we are today. Yeah. I was reliably informed that, you know, the Jamaica National Anthem. Did you learn any Jamaican patois? Because I've learned some myself. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't say. And I, I wish that you would not push me to, to, to say something in... <laughs> In patois, but yeah, I, I understand a few few words when, yeah. when they say... Uh, Soon come, what, I mean, what, that's what, easy... Wagwan, coach, wagwan, they yeah. say, they say, me there, me there. Yeah. Well, I, that's I've learned bit... things like this. No, but that's just like me, because I do I can't speak fluent, but I understand and I find myself from time to time saying things as if mm. I'm Jamaican. Mm. So I love that, I love the rhythm of the language. Uh, you know, we're getting ready to finish this part of the interview, but I want to just hear your overall thoughts. You said this Jamaican Reggae Boys squad has a lot of quality. I think you're very blessed to work with players like Mikel Antonio, who's in the EPL, Leon Bailey, who's lighting up the EPL as well. Your thoughts just on the overall quality, coach, of the players that you've been blessed to work with? No, like I said before, I, I compare, and you can always just compare to what you, you learn and, and have experienced. So, for example, the, the Iceland national team, we qualified for the Euro finals, did well in the, in the Euros, and we qualified for the World Cup as well. And if I compare the talents, the, the, the Jamaica talents is so, so, so much better than the Iceland talent. But the Icelandic national team had so, so, so much better team. Okay. So this is what I would like to to do, to, to bring the talents better together so we can both have talents Understand. and a good team. Yeah. Your thoughts though, because I know you're, um, you attend some of the matches, the schoolboy football matches, once you're not busy with, of course, senior reggae boys duty. Your thoughts on that schoolboy football program? I know it can improve. There's a lot of room for improvement in anything we do. But just, you know, your initial thoughts. No, I've, I've, I've watched it and I've been really impressed. It's probably the best organized tournament in the country uh, and, the, and the brochure about where the games are, what time, what plays, who's referee decided long before. This is something that it, it is really impressive. 
And I think this has grown in the culture here in Jamaica, the schoolboy football. Uh, and we should just find ways to supplement this tournament. How can we improve even further the, the players playing in that tournament? But I think because of so many reasons, this is an absolute untouchable part of you know, developing players in Jamaica. But how can we, JFF, or we as coaches, or we as, we as clubs in Jamaica, how can we supplement this tournament before in developing players and after yeah. developing players? Because this, this schoolboy uh, season is really short. So how can we do after the season is finished now? For example, now it's finished. So do the players wait? you know, for their yeah. development for, for, for a long time. And, and it go. affects form. It affects your form when you have such yeah, a long yeah, yeah. period. And, and, and if you just compare the, the training load for academy players or players in Europe versus training time here in Jamaica, it's a, it's a big, big difference. And we have to compensate in some, some way. And we are trying to, to and, the, and JFF is doing a really good job at the moment, trying to build both uh, national training centers uh, regional uh, coaches, etc. So, is, is a is a lot of things starting to develop. Yeah. But the thing is, just start. Agreed. Like, like uh, we always we don't need to wait for a budget. Just start. Yeah. If you're a coach somewhere in some parish, just start. Go on the pitch. Start training. Everything uh, will fall in place. Yeah. Then slowly <laughs> it will come. But if everybody is waiting for someone else to do something. Nothing normally happens. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. Well, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, and we know that you played friendlies in Trinidad and Tobago last year, then you had the Gold Cup. Based on my understanding, because I've been doing the research, talking to the right people in your camp, you've developed a good relationship with coach Angus Eve. How important is it that, you know, Caribbean coaches have that relationship? And I'm thinking to ensure that the entire Caribbean, the football improves as a whole. Yeah, it's, it's really important for all small nations to have some someone to, to cooperate with. And I think this partnership with, with Trinidad for us is, is important. Uh, the teams, whether it's the senior team, uh, the, the under 20 or whatever, I think they're, they're pretty equal when it comes to, to playing. So it's good games for us. It's, that's number one, it's good games. And just expose players whether it's women's, whether it's men's or boys or whatever, to expose them to international football is always good and shouldn't always need to go far away to play in international games. We, we could do it within the Caribbean and the same with coaching education with, you know, Angus is, is, is helping me in understanding. I am trying to assist Angus in, in, in giving him info and etc. So I think it's, it's good if we work together, we probably both will improve yes. as coaches and hopefully our teams will do as well. Yeah, sounds good. Well, your wife, who I'm happy that she's here in studio so she can hear the answer. She's a fitness coach with the under 20 reggae girls and one of your sons, also a football coach. Is it fair to say that that runs in the family? Yeah, I, I don't know. Why, <laughs> I don't know why both both the, both my or our boys went to um, sports science in university. So mm -hmm. the older one is already graduated as a, as a master in sports science. The, the younger one is just starting. Uh, and they are both coaching for the one of the biggest clubs in the capital. Mm -hmm. So no, proud. I, I, <laughs> I, I want them to do something else because this is a tough job. <laughs> but uh, again, this is their passion. Uh, their mother was a, a, a national team player yes. um, and a coach, and I, I was a player and a coach. Uh, so probably, it, it kind of they, they they just were born with this and they saw nothing else so they just go, go and do it so yeah. I, I wish one of them would be a dentist so I can give the <laughs> clinic to, to them but well they're following the football side coach you're forgetting to tell the viewers how good she cooks because she's going to be angry when you come upset yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I know see <laughs> the kind of when I was talking about the food she looked at me and you know I understood all food you know, you, you asked about what's the best food. It's her food. It's her food. Okay, good. We so got that, that out official. there. That's official. That's so official now. Coach can go home in peace. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. All right, so it's now time for the most exciting part of today's interview. It's rapid fire time. This is where I get to have some fun. So, Coach, I'll ask you a question. You say the first word or phrase that comes to mind. <laughs> I'm already laughing. Ready? Okay. I don't think so, but go. Okay, best part about your job. 
best best, best part best part about your job winning biggest success of 2023 oh, Canada way favorite thing about Jamaica weather favorite footballer in the world oh former one Sammy Lee Ooh. most difficult part of being a coach keeping control <laughs> Keep the composure. <laughs> Keep it cool. I've seen. <laughs> I've seen some instances. Easiest part of your job? Oh, it's the people around me. I think is the easiest one. You have good people around you. Sorry, a long answer for for a That's for okay. a quick question. That's okay. I'll give you a pass. Most successful moment as a coach so far? Taking my nation to the the first World Cup, smallest nation ever to qualify for the World Cup final. Ever had a big argument with a player? Yeah. Hmm, no, I want to know more, but that's not the question. Favorite Jamaican word that is fit for airplay? Oh. <laughs> it's gonna be. <laughs> oh. Legacy you would like to leave as head coach? Yeah, I would like to leave my shirt in a better place when I go. Yeah. So. Whatever, whatever that means. Hopefully, some some achievements, but at least to leave my shirt in a better place. Yeah. Well, let's head across now to social media to see what's been happening. So you saying Saint Leo Bolt? He's a fan of the Jamaica Reggae Boys, and every time y'all play, he has to tweet about it. This was in 2023 when, of course, he was celebrating that win for the Jamaica Reggae Boys. Anything you want to say to the fans, Coach? No, for the support, really, we really appreciate it. It has been growing, but I really want now when we play the next game in June here, hopefully it's going to be one home game, at least in June, that we show up in numbers and we do everything to qualify for this World Cup Finals in 226 and it starts now in June. So it's, it's not a long time until and, and just th this is our chance. We have the, the squad to do it, so, but we need every part to click together so, so we, can, we can do this. Yeah, there's a second reaction. I don't know how you'll take this one, but I found it funny. So I think this had to be when the Reggae Boys was going through. No, this can't be a bad patch. This is 2024 coach Jose Mourinho to take over the Reggae Boys. What yes. about this? This yeah. is when he was sacked um, from it's, AS it's, Roma. Yeah, it's just just <laughs> just recently sacked. So they're bringing him now. Yeah. Would you have him on your team? Yeah, good, good assistant coach. But I, I have two really good ones. But he would be nice to have him around. But he would run things. <laughs> you, I don't know so? how it's going to work. Then I need to have you as a press officer. Then we'll cool him down. Good one. Well, Coach, I really, really enjoyed chatting with you today on In Case You Missed It. I want to thank you for your time. I know you're a busy man and I look forward to seeing the numerous successes in store for the Reggae Boys this season. Thank you very much. All right. Well, viewers, that's a wrap for today's episode of In Case You Missed It. Be sure to like, share and comment and let me know what you enjoyed most about today's interview. Goodbye for now.